Hi there, welcome to another week. This is week three in January. And today I went to the garden center to buy a plant to fill the gap that the Christmas tree created when I took it down. Um, if you're anything like me, you're one of two types of shoppers. Most of the time you go shopping and you buy something because you're so desperate just to have something. And then you bring it home and then you kick yourself and say, God, why didn't I just wait? Why didn't I just look around? Why didn't I think about it more? Or you're one of those people, because I am both, that goes out and spends a whole time looking at things and then saying to yourself, oh, do you know what? I just don't know. I think I need more time to think about it. And then you don't get anything. And then you come home thinking, oh, I should have just bloody got that thing. So yesterday was, I went to the shop. I bought it because I had to have it, even though I wasn't really sure I wanted it. And the th wanting in question is this. It's... Um, a ficus. It belongs, to, so it's the fig family. Um, it's called ficus benjamina and it's a really hardy, really fast growing, uh, super duper type of ficus and it's glorious. Why did I have a struggle with it and why did I buy it and potentially might have issues about it? Probably because it reminds me of a 90s office, of the office plants um, in the 90s. And I guess it wasn't what I had in mind, I don't think. What I really wanted was an olive. Olives don't really survive indoors unless you have them by a really large window, uh, well watered, and you get to take them out sometime during the year. I mean, I want this just here, so a compromise, perhaps a good one. I mean, I do love it. I just, um, I need to warm to it. So here's my collection of dried flowers that I was supposed to sort of show you last week. These ones here are dried fennel, so wild fennel flowers. Um, I have quite a number of these actually, and I, I normally put them into earthenware pots. The rest of them, I couldn't even tell you what they are. So I bought this book a couple of months ago from the bookshop uh, called By the Side of the Road. And what I was actually after was more of an encyclopedia of plants and flowers. But this one caught my attention because this is about native plants or herbs that you'll find on the roadside in Cyprus. And since I'm such an avid collector of other people's uh, weeds and things, I thought it'd be a nice a little companion for when I'm out on the roadside uh, plucking dried flowers. So I've gone through this. I haven't identified much that I've picked so far. One that I definitely have is a dried fennel flower. It's wild fennel, um, which is just everywhere. But the other one that I have just found that I have picked also is uh, one that I'm trying to show you that I can't, this one. This one is called some Latin name that I can't pronounce. And it's, mm, it's a native species of Cyprus. It occurs by roadsides, in field margins, and wastelands. And my friends, I have a bunch of dried ones I'm about to put in the vase. More glorious rain. Did 
Today is Sunday and I have done nothing but sit and watch movies and read old style by magazines. I'm not sure if you've ever seen style by, it's um, a Swedish magazine by Elin Kling. She's one of my favourites designers, she does um, Totem, I think that's how you say it. And she's always been a great inspiration to me uh, in her style and what she designs. And I've been going through these magazines today because even though these are 2000 and, hmm, 2015 to 16, I don't think I went past 2016 in my subscription, they haven't dated whatsoever. And I'll show you what I mean. So my favourite pages in each of the magazines is called Favourite Show, where one of the editors will pick a look out of one of their favourite shows and then create some inspiration around. This is 2016 and it's still so relevant. I mean, you could wear any of these outfits four to five years later and it would look amazing. Which says to me that either you become an early adopter when you read these magazines or you can definitely count on a magazine like Style Bite to tell you what's up and coming, what you can invest in and what has longevity because so many of the looks that I've suggested have survived, have lasted and are literally what the trends are still presenting uh, to us every month. Okay, hi, so I thought today I would take you through my summer wardrobe, the one that I wore day in, day out since we arrived and which I've just packed away in the last couple of weeks. It's got a bit chilly, it's, the winter's definitely arrived. So let's just go through this because I think this wardrobe was really fun. It was very minimal, I didn't have very much. I brought, I brought a few, few things from here, brought a couple of bits over from England and I think they did me well. There are some things missing which I'll tell you about. But in general, I don't think you need much. So I started, um, when I arrived here, I invested in this trapeze dress from Zara. Now this is a cotton, 100% cotton, but it's quite, it's quite big. So it never stuck to the skin. I never felt like I was suffocating in it. And given it was cotton, it was very breathable. Uh, black, not the greatest color in, in the, you know, in a 30 degree heat, but, I never felt too hot, let's put it that way. I love this dress so much. It's super stylish. And I wore it with my Hermes sandals, my Zara sandals, and on beachy occasions, I wore it with my Arizona Love reef sandals. The next one I want to show you is a bit more dressy. This is a silk satin and it's from a designer called uh, Philosophy Collection, which is Greek. And I started to support uh, Greek brands when I arrived here and Cypriot boutiques, rather than trying to shop online or head off to Zara every other week to find something new. So this one is slinkier, it's a slit dress, has a slit on the side, but this is the one that I really felt was extremely versatile because I could wear it during the day and throw on, say, my linen shirt like this as a cover up to the beach or as I went to the supermarket or picked up the kids from school uh, but I could also wear it for evenings before lockdowns and restrictions so this was a, a brilliant number uh, extremely um, loose of the skin oh, and stylish and slinky and beautiful so I lived in this one just another black dress to tease you uh, but my favourite of all, this is my Arquette dress. Love the square neckline, love the elasticated back. It's made from foil, which is a really lightweight cotton. And it hung off, uh, hung off the body, so not against my skin. And I was in dreamland wearing this. Really comfortable, it didn't feel hot. Super minimalistic and stylish. And again, wore it with my favourite sandals, my Hermes and my Zara's. Uh, I never felt out of place in it. You know, I could dress it up or dress it down. Again, throw over a shirt, like so. It's a beauty. 
So if you want to invest in something that is black, I highly recommend a voile or a lawn and something that is a bit more floaty, that isn't tight to the skin. So these are looser dresses, are just the thing you need. Now this one here is my last black number in dresses to show you. Um, it's a bit older. I got this a couple of years ago and this is a softer cotton. Uh, it does cling a bit around the waist, but I never found it too hot either because it's very breathable. Like it's a little bit see-through, so you can tell that it's a very lightweight cotton. That one was a showstopper actually, and I wore it my, with my Hermes sandals. Okay, in terms of shorts, I owned one pair, no, I didn't own any pairs when I came out here. And I bought one pair of denim ones, um, way too trendy, not my kind of style, but they sufficed just for that season. And I wore the shorts with my white linen shirt from Massimo Dutti. Best investment I've ever made. If you're going to come out to the Mediterranean, I highly recommend linen shorts and linen shirts and linen dresses. Um, talking about shirts, this is my Iro shirt. I've had it for about eight years. I wore it through pregnancy as well. It has been a dream and it's a really classic, simple cut. So again, I would just pop this over, say my bodysuit and my shorts like that for the school run or down to the beach. Super easy, you can whip one layer off, you've got another layer underneath. You never feel too hot, but you can cover up if you don't want to have, I don't know, sunburn and sun blaring on your skin. So that's a good one. And the last one to show you is this really cute little blouse. It's by Entropia. It's got some really cute detailing here. Some nice big sleeves. And this I also wore with my shorts and I wore it over my bodysuit. And on days where it was a little bit cooler, when the um, mountain breeze was coming down to the sea, you could pop them on with a pair of jeans. It was perfect. So, the one thing that I really needed more than anything, which I didn't have, were white dresses. I'm a bit cautious with white dresses because I don't like them to be see-through. But if I had invested in, say, a thicker linen or a linen dress that had a slip underneath, that would have been perfect. Just the thing I needed to kind of reflect the sunlight and feel cooler. Um, and other than that, maybe some linen shorts. All my excitement over black summer dresses, I completely forgot to show you this one non-black number. It was in my summer wardrobe. This one here is a Zara Holtenick dress in the same fabric as that trapeze dress, so it's quite a crinkly, stiff cotton. Um, and it has that wonderful elasticated back that you also saw in the Arquette dress. You know, I'm trying to show you it and it doesn't even look like a dress. You can't even see, you can't even see it properly. Um, you know, I'll just throw it on and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. She is on, very loose fitting, super stylish, has a lovely halter neck here and that gorgeous elasticated back. I've actually got my trousers on underneath, which is that dark shade here, because uh, it's, free it's freezing at the minute. But yeah, it was a really sweet summery number.
So I think I'm going to end the vlog here. Um, it's actually Saturday now and I meant to finish it on Thursday properly, but um, I twisted my knee in my Pilates class on Tuesday and I wasn't able to really get much done otherwise than sit on the bed and have a hot water bottle on. I did finish my book, which was great, but um, that's about as much as I achieved. Um, other than that, I did actually try to do some cooking like I promised, but I have little people who live with me and one of those little said people wanted to help out. And I'm still not comfortable having them on the internet yet. So when I get past that, um, past that, if I ever do, I will maybe show them. And if I actually get a chance to cook without someone trying to help me, I will um, show you. So anyway, hope you had a lovely week and hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching again and I'll see you in the next vlog.